any excitement that the affair at Mogala might have caused in Kabul when we got back and told our tale was overshadowed by the arrival on the same day of the new army commander, General Elphinstone, my chief and sponsor. I was piqued at the time, for I thought I had done pretty well, and was annoyed to find that no one thought my skirmish with the gill's eyes and securing of hostages worth more than a cocked eyebrow and an, oh, really? But, looking back, I can say that, all unwittingly, Kabul and the army were right to regard Elfie's arrival as an incident of the greatest significance. It opened a new chapter. It was a prelude to events that rang round the world. Elfie... "'ably assisted by MacNaughton, was about to reach the peak of his career. "'He was going to produce the most shameful, ridiculous disaster in British military history. "'No doubt Thomas Hughes would find it significant that in such a disaster "'I would emerge with fame, honour and distinction, all quite unworthily acquired, "'but you, having followed my progress so far, won't be surprised at all. "'Let me say that when I talk of disasters, I speak with authority.' I have served at Balaclava, Cornpore, and Little Big Horn. Name the biggest born fools who wore uniform in the nineteenth century. Cardigan, Sale, Custer, Raglan, Lucan. I knew them all. Think of all the conceivable misfortunes that can arise from combinations of folly, cowardice, and sheer bad luck, and I'll give you chapter and verse. But I still state unhesitatingly that for pure vacillating stupidity, for superb incompetence to command, for ignorance combined with bad judgment, in short, for the true talent for catastrophe, Elfie Bay stood alone. Others abide our question, but Elfie outshines them all as the greatest military idiot of our own or any other day. Only he could have permitted the first Afghan war and let it develop to such ruinous defeat. It was not easy. He started with a good army, a secure position, some excellent officers, a disorganized enemy, and repeated opportunities to save the situation. But Elfie, with the touch of true genius, swept aside these obstacles with unerring precision, and out of order wrought complete chaos. We shall not, with luck, look upon his like again. However, I tell you this not as a preface to a history of the war, but because if you are to judge my career properly and understand how the bully expelled from rugby became a hero, you have to know how things were in that extraordinary year of 1841. The story of the war and its beginnings is the background of the picture, although dashing Harry Flashman is the main figure in the foreground. 